Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, last week I did a review on a three-jaw chuck where I mounted it on my uh, rotary table. And when I contacted Vever, that's who makes the chuck, about this uh, three-jaw chuck, they asked me if I wanted to do a review on their plasma cutter. And, uh, well, I hesitated for a minute because I didn't really think I needed a plasma cutter, but after doing a little investigation, uh, it might be pretty handy. So we're going to do a review on a plasma cutter, and I'll try to keep it honest. Never used one before, so uh, keep that in mind. So we'll kind of learn as we go. But I, I'm getting kind of excited about trying it. So uh, anyway, let's get started. Let's unbox this thing. Wow, quite a bit smaller than I thought. I like that though. I got a space problem in my shop. It's supposed to be 110 and 220. I don't know if it's got like an adapter with it or what. Wow. Airline. Like I said, I've never used one of these before. Looks pretty cool though. It's got that little clip on the uh, end to maintain spacing between what you're cutting and the nozzle. And here's the power adapter if I want to run it on 110. All the hookups, the ground. Ah. Not sure what that is. I'm going to have to read some instructions. Okay, well, it even came with a regulator. Okay, let's look at what's included in this box. Uh, got the cutting gun. It's got about a 16 foot lead, which seems pretty impressive to me. Uh, instruction manual. Fairly easy to read. The translation is a little better than average, I would say. Uh, I got I to gotta look at that some more. It's got uh, air connections, fittings, some uh, thread tape, uh, hose clamps, and some screws to mount these things. They go on the handle of the machine here uh, to hold, hold your nozzle. I'm not really sure how that works yet. Comes complete with a regulator that mounts on the back of the machine. All the brackets, gauge, a couple of consumables, the tips. Uh, comes with a, a seven foot ground ground cable, a uh, 110 to 220 adapter, or 220 to 110, whatever, uh, and the unit itself, which is incredibly light uh, inverter. Uh, I'm very impressed with it so far. So first thing I'm going to do is hook up this regulator and hook up the air supply. I'm not sure how useful these things will be, but I'm going to mount them. If I don't like them, I'll take them off. It's supposed to hold the uh, torch when you're not using it. Okay, I've run into some unfamiliar uh, settings on this gauge here. It says uh, the cut pressure needs to be 4.5 psi at a flow rate of 6 cubic feet per minute. But the gauge is kilograms per per something centimeters. Anyway, I found a conversion chart, and it's basically uh, 
uh, three, the starting point is three kilograms per square centimeter. Air leak. Okay. This tubing here was a little oversized. Could not get it to seal. So I've put a piece of quarter inch airline on there. Fit a little tight on the barb fittings, but I'm sure it'll seal good now. Probably be a good idea to put an elbow right there so the that doesn't get knocked off, but I didn't have an elbow to put on there, so so we're done with the air. Ground cable hookup. Connectors look nice. Now all we need is some power. I guess I could try it on 110 and see what it does. I had, had the output amperage set on 30 and it tripped the breaker so I got to set it uh, 20, 25 now. That's a 14 gauge sheet metal. This circuit is 20 amp and I'm, I've got it set at about 28 right now so it may trip the breaker a little bit. This quarter inch, let's see what it does. Well, not too good. No, it's not cutting through. Try this sheet metal again, see what it does. Okay, for sheet metal that worked fantastic. But I'm going to have to have a 220 power source to uh, cut quarter inch. Yeah, that'll be tomorrow after I get the 220 outlet installed. Okay, I've had a chance to play with this thing a little while. And it does well on 120 volts up to about an eighth of an inch. And anything beyond that, it's, it's really pushing it. Uh, maybe with a little uh, more steady hand or something, you might go a little thicker. But I, I, I think the 120 volt limit is about an eighth inch. So I installed a uh, 240 uh, 40 amp outlet, and it does way better. Uh, I'm fairly impressed with it. Uh, I don't really have a good comparison because I've never used a plasma cutter before. But uh, I'm, I'm fairly impressed. Uh, I've, I have used a cutting torch and it works better than the cutting torch. So uh, let's get on and uh, test this thing, demonstrate it, and uh, let's try some 3 8 inch. All I've cut so far is a quarter inch. We'll cut some sheet metal too. We'll just show what it does. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, let's try some quarter inch. Well, that worked pretty good. See what you think. got some rough edges but overall that's uh, really smooth. 
kind of hit and miss for me because I'm not real steady. But that, I don't know if it'll cut 3 eighths or not, but we'll see. Let's try, try some sheet metal first. Okay, this is a eighth inch, and I'm sure it'll work fine. I turned the amperage down to about 40 amps. It was on 50 for the quarter inch. Well, that worked good. Yeah, I like that. Let's try uh, some some thinner sheet metal. Okay, this is 14 gauge sheet metal. I turned it down to about 30 amps. I'm just going to freehand this. Uh, I'm not very steady, so I don't know what the outcome will be here. Like I said, I can't make a straight line. <laughs> I was just goofing around there. Let's try some aluminum. Never tried cutting aluminum with a torch or a plasma, but it's supposed to work good. Okay, I should probably read the instructions, because I don't know have any uh, idea on aluminum on what amperage. We're just going to try 30 amp right where it was before. This is 8th inch aluminum. If it doesn't work we'll try something else. That worked fantastic. Not super smooth, but it's pretty good. Probably a little smoother than steel. Anyway, I don't have much need to cut aluminum, but if you do a lot of fabricating with aluminum or steel, this is, this is really the trick. Now we're going to try uh, 3 8 which may fail. I don't know. We'll see. And if it fails, it's probably not the plasma cutter. It's probably me. But we'll see. Okay, this right here is 3 8 inch, and then we're going to try a half inch if this works. Hmm. I think that was mostly me. Let's try it a little bit slower. Well, that works. It's not super fantastic, but it still works. Uh, it's mostly me, probably. That's three eighths. Little slag on the bottom side, but it's pretty clean cut. You. Uh, try this half inch.
uh, mostly about skill. If you've got a steady hand, it works good. Cuts pretty smooth. Definitely some, uh, especially on the thicker stuff, there's some, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, slag on the bottom of it. But I, I'm overall uh, fairly pleased with this. Makes a heck of a mess, but when you turn it off, it'll sit there and run for about, oh, I don't know, a minute or less. I guess it probably depends on how hot it is. There you go. Turns off. Very lightweight. Very portable. Uh, of course, you got to have a power source wherever you're cutting. But it's very lightweight, easy to store. Uh, inverter technology is fairly amazing. As far as air pressure goes, uh, it's uh, recommended uh, three to four, uh, three or four uh, kilograms per, how is that? Anyway, it, it, it's the blue scale. <laughs> it's uh, three to four on the blue scale. It's fairly low pressure. Uh, higher pressure for thicker metal. Uh, for the half inch, I had it in maximum amperage, which is about 50 amps. And uh, for sheet metal, probably about 20, 28 to 30. Yeah, put this up on the table here where you can kind of see what it is. Very simple connection. There's your torch. Ground. It's just like a bayonet. Fairly quality connections. That right there is control trigger control on the ground. Uh, display here. Still set at 50 amps from cutting that half inch. 25, 24 to uh, 30, somewhere in there for sheet metal. Uh, the air pressure is very forgiving. I would say uh, 3 to 4 on the dial probably adequate. It comes with the regulator, which is nice. Uh, the only problem I had assembling it is the air hose didn't fit. It was leaking. It wasn't a good fit. And anyway, that about wraps it up. And thanks for joining me. And be, be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.